I want to do a little demonstration here of just a couple of the deficiencies of a modified sine wave inverter, uh, like this one that I did my other video on. There are many different deficiencies to it. Um, some of them will actually destroy your equipment, uh, but uh, this is just a quick demonstration with a few very inexpensive things that I'm not so uh, worried about destroying. Uh, in this case, this is just a desk fan. Just about any fan you buy is going to be this type of construction. And uh, this UPS is currently plugged into the wall, and it's also being uh, connected to that battery over there. So right now, it is on and we're running off of wall power. So this fan is plugged into the UPS. If I turn it on, it'll be running off of a 60 hertz sine wave from the power company. And I'm hoping that you can uh, hear the fan run. Good amount of air coming out of it. It's all, all working like you'd expect it to. So now I'm going to come over here and uh, unplug the UPS from the wall. It's going to switch over to battery power and it will still be 120 volts RMS, but it's going to be with a modified sine wave. And uh, if you can hear the fan, just listen to what happens. The fan just about stopped running. It's still blowing a little bit of air, but not much. Hold it up here, it's uh, very low speed. Uh, there's really hardly any air coming out of it. If I plug it back in, it speeds right back up. <clears throat> so what's going on here is that uh, this is a machine, rotating machine, that needs AC power to run properly. And without uh, a true sine wave, it does not have the torque or efficiency that it's supposed to have to operate properly. Um, this will be the case for any motor, doesn't matter what motor you're talking about. I wanted to do another quick demonstration with a, a different fan. This is, once again, an ordinary fan. Um, and uh, the inverter's plugged into the wall, connected to the battery, fan's plugged into it. So I'll turn the fan on. Just turn it on low. And the fan operates just like you'd expect it to. Blows a good amount of air, it's nice and quiet. And if I uh, unplug it from the wall now, and let it run off of the battery, modified sine wave. The fan slows down, and also it makes this horrible buzzing noise that uh, you can probably hear on camera if I shut up for a moment. And that's not the inverter, that's the fan making that noise. Uh, and what's going on is the, uh, the fan motor in here is, uh, is unhappy, basically. It wants a sine wave, it's not getting it, and it's taking all of those high frequency harmonics that come from the modified sine wave, and uh, it's converting those into heat instead of into rotational power. So the motor in this fan is, if I let it run like this for a long time, it may actually overheat. And I'm also not getting the airflow that I want out of the fan. And this is the same sort of issue that you'll have with, with any, any motor on a modified sine wave. You should never run motors off of them for this reason. Uh, they'll run hot, they won't have the power that they should have, uh, they may overheat. So that's a definite deficiency of the modified sine wave. I could go through many other examples of deficiencies of them, but to be frank about it, I don't want to ruin any of my stuff, so I'm going to stop here. I should also mention that uh, there are quite a few loads that a modified sine wave inverter is just fine for. Um, one of them being power tools, power tools that are corded, that is. Um, they will all run just fine off of these waveforms. They actually use the universal motors. Uh, any motor with brushes will be perfectly happy with this. Um, any resistive load, electric heaters, uh, electric lights, um, Fluorescent lights will probably run just fine off of them. They may be a little bit dimmer, and they may buzz a little bit, but, you know, who really cares if your $2 fluorescent light bulb doesn't last quite as long as it should. It'll run just fine off of these, at least for a while. And uh, there, there's many other loads, too, that these are appropriate for, but for certain loads, like uh, sensitive electronics, um, things that have uh, transformers in them that may overheat, and any sort of motor that's not brushed, you really want to stay away from this. And uh, so let's take a look at uh, the waveform differences. Um, I'll plug a uh, 
my multimeter since I don't have an oscilloscope into this unit and uh, into the wall and into my new APC Smart UPS 1500 and we'll see what the waveforms actually look like. As I said, I don't actually own an oscilloscope so I just use my uh, scope meter here. It, it seems to do the job for uh, some of these simpler applications. But uh, this meter right now is uh, just have the test leads jammed into the back of this modified sine wave UPS inverter here and uh, it's plugged into wall power right now and the wall power is 123.1 volts so my power company is going above and beyond right now and that is the waveform that I'm currently getting from the power company it's a nice nice clean sine wave on there so let's see what happens when I take my UPS and unplug it and let it run off the battery power. It's 123.1 volts AC, 60 hertz. Unplug this. And now it is 116 volts AC, which is uh, perfectly respectable. Um, you'll notice that the, uh, the hertz on this meter is going all over the place. Uh, and that's because the waveform is so bad that the meter doesn't really know what frequency it is. So if I switch to the oscilloscope output, you can see that uh, that is the nasty waveform that this thing is. Move it a little closer here. And uh, that's just not very nice. But that is what a modified sine wave inverter looks like, right there. So now we'll do the same thing with, uh, with my other UPS and compare waveforms to see how much better my, my better quality unit is than this one. I have my uh, multimeter here plugged into the back of it. I have a, an, a load over here. It's an electric heater. Uh, on low it's uh, 600 watts, on medium it's 900, on high it's 1500 approximately. And over here I have my battery bank. They are uh, two marine deep cycle batteries. They're not true deep cycle batteries. They're uh, kind of a, a hybrid between starting and deep cycle. Uh, if you look at the ratings on top here, you can see the uh, part number they're rated for uh, cranking amps and such, reserve capacity. Um, I want to be able to get a fair amount of current out of these with a minimal voltage drop. So I don't want to go with the true deep cycle battery, otherwise I'd have batteries that weigh way too much for me to lug around. But uh, these work well for this application. I have uh, a, couple of, a couple of fuses here, 260 amp fuses, just in case something goes wrong. Um, I don't want batteries to explode inside my house, that wouldn't be good and uh, have this uh, battery cable. It's the same kind of stuff that I had used on my other video. Um, I was able to uh, salvage the, uh, the end from the battery bank and put it on here instead, so this should be really solid cable for that purpose. But uh, I'm going to put this camera back on the tripod. And uh, we'll plug in the batteries. See if there's uh, any magic smoke that gets let out. So far, so good. Now I'll uh, plug the unit in. Everything seems to be in order. Um, this really is the first time I've plugged it in, so I'm a little bit apprehensive. Um, I really should check the, uh, the battery voltage here first. I'll put it on DC and make sure it's not overcharging my batteries. Twenty-seven point eight volts. That's just about perfect. Plug these back in where they were. All right. AC voltage. Okay, so I'll turn it on. Hopefully it turns on. I'll go through the battery test mode. Either pass or fail. It's 
running off of battery power. Everything, everything seems to be good. The test was complete and uh, it says everything's okay. So, so there it is running off of wall power. There's our waveform. Change the scale a little bit. There we go. So there is our uh, AC waveform. Looks pretty good because it's on wall power. And we'll unplug this and see what the uh, output waveform looks like on battery power. Right now it's 122.3 volts, 60 hertz. Plug it. Annoying beeper. We'll have to get used to that. Uh, now it's 120.7 volts, 60 hertz, and you can see that it's almost a perfect sine wave yet, which is uh, exactly what I want to see. Um, I'm going to try turning on this uh, electric heater now. It's plugged into the back of it. I'm running off of uh, battery power. <clears throat> I'll just turn it on the fan setting first, see if anything changes. The fan runs, has good airflow, it's nice and quiet, just like you'd expect on a sine wave inverter. No change. Turn it on low, that's 600 watts, which is a good portion of the full rating of this unit. It's rated for 980 watts. You can see that uh, three of the load lights lit up. And uh, I don't think the uh, waveform here changed. I'll toggle back and forth between fan and low. Looks about the same, still at 120 volts, so that's a good sign. And uh, now I'll try medium. I don't know if that's going to overload it or not, we'll see. No, it doesn't. And medium also looks good, 120 volts, perfect sine wave. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, now let's try high. Uh, this particular unit will run for a couple of seconds, overloaded before it shuts down, so I'm going to give that a try. I'm not going to leave it on very long because it'll shut off on me. So toggling between low here and high. High is, remember, 1500 watts. That's way over the rating of this unit. And we stay pretty much at 120 volts in a perfect sine wave. So I should be able to get a pretty clean sine wave out of this at 1500 watts, like I was planning. And uh, really the question here becomes uh, a matter of heat. What's going to get hot and uh, can everything in here handle that kind of power on a continuous basis? So I think the next thing that I'm going to try is uh, a few thermal tests here, stress tests. We'll see how that goes.